Hello everyone, in today's video I'll be showing you all how to handle your code when your code runs into an error or it fails for some reason. Now, a code which breaks or a code which has an error is inevitable. No matter how good you're at coding, eventually your code will break or you may run into an error. Now the only way to stop this from happening is to find out why it happened. So we need to display an error message to tell ourselves or the customers or the people using your program why the code has failed and it will also help if you know if you have an error message it will help you to debug your own code and the other thing is you don't want your program to just crash with a whole bunch of error messages what you want is you want a graceful exit you want to tell yourself or others that okay the code was unable to run a request but it was unable to do so because of this reason, right? So to do this, we will be using a module called logging. So let's import it first, import logging. And the request or the command which we will try to execute is we will try to remove a file. So we import OS and the code which we will be executing is os.remove and inside the remove function we just pass in a a random file now this file does not exist and I'm asking it asking Python to remove this file so obviously Python can't remove a file which does not exist so let's see what happens when you run this code immediately you see that Python gives a an error and it tells us that no such file or directory exists so it can't do it but the problem is you see it just gave a whole bunch of error so if someone using your program is not um, does not know much about programming when he sees this uh, error message he will get quite confused or even if you are running a, your, a program by yourself and the program is quite complex you don't want th this error message showing up you want something simpler so that you can immediately know what the issue is so to prevent this from happening we have to use try so basically you put the code you want to execute underneath uh, the try statement and if try fails if you are unable to execute this uh, piece of code what you do is you write accept and then you raise an exception as e so basically uh, accept will raise an exception and store it in the variable e and then you print out a statement say something like unable to delete the file so now you won't just have a bunch of error messages it will actually print out that it's unable to delete the file that's why the program ended so at least now you have uh, you can uh, you have a error message which is understood by everyone now if you want to debug your code you need to write print r e p r bracket e so this function will print out the exception message so it will print out the error message so you know exactly what the error is and then you can write finally so now the finally part is basically going to execute a piece of code which will execute uh, no matter uh, try the code within try works or not so if os.remove works, it will run finally. If os.remove does not work, it will still run finally. So here you want uh, to write a piece of code or print a statement which you want to be displayed regardless of the output of try. So here let's just write print uh, tried to delete the file. So Finally, we'll always execute, doesn't matter whether try uh, runs successfully or not. So let's save this, run this and see what we get. So you see, this part is the first uh, message which we got when we did not use try, but now that we use try, you see, it was obviously not able to remove this file, so it uh, printed out unable to delete the file, which was under the accept part. And then it printed out the error message, OS error, 
to no such file or directory. So it actually tells you that, okay, so this is the error. It displays the error message. So you can easily understand this is the error message. And it will also display the finally message. So it will print out, try to delete the file. But the problem with this is you see, like if you have a lot of code, and let's say you have 10,000 lines of code, and you just get this message, you, it's not that specific. You need to know exactly which line or which file even the error message is popping up in because when you have a lot of code, you might have a lot of modules running at the same time. So it's always easier to pinpoint by knowing the file name, the line number, and the error message. So what we can do, what we can do is we can just comment this out for now. Sorry. Okay, so we comment this and then instead of uh, using print repr function, we will use logging dot error. Inside the error function, we pass an e. e stores the exception and then ex c underscore info is equal to true. Now if you run the code, you will see that you get a more detailed error message. So you see now it's printing out unable to delete the file and then it prints out, it prints out the error and it will tell you the file name, it will tell you the line number which is line 5. This is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So line 5 is where it failed and it will also display the error message and then finally it will print out what finally uh, has which is try to delete the file but you see the problem with this is it gives you the error message but it's quite difficult to read right so you want it to be more uh, reader friendly because if you have more complex code the error log will be even larger and it will be even more difficult to understand so to do that let's comment this out and under logging under import logging, you need to write logging.basicconfig. So the logging module has a function called basicconfig where you can actually configure how your error message is displayed. So inside here, you need to give some values of some arguments. The first one is level. So basically in the logging module, there are levels of error. There is error, there is warning, there is critical. So we're going to go with logging.info. So basically info is lower than critical error level fails. So it will basically uh, show any error which is above the info severity of the fail. So use that. After that, you need to write format is equal to. So basically the format uh, argument as asking you what format do you want your uh, error message to be displayed as. So here, as I said earlier, we need the file name, we need the line number, and we need the error message. So to do so, we write file name colon, and then to display the uh, file name attribute, we need to write percentage bracket file name s so this file name is actually a part of the error message the logging module will um, store the error uh, the the f logging module will store the file name into the file name variable so we're using a, a percentage bracket file name s to display that piece of information and then we write backslash n to go to the next line and then write line colon and then we write percentage line number and then d so now this one will display the line number and this line number is not always dot remove this line number is actually the line where your uh, logging is taking place so it will it will be under the accept exception as e so i'll get back to that in a minute
So moving on, we need to now uh, print the error message. So backslash n message colon is uh, then percentage bracket message s. So now this format is going to display file name colon and then give the file name and then next line line colon and then give the line number and then the next line message colon and then the error message and I would actually put another uh, backslash n so that uh, the this line trying to delete the file will go into the next line and will have some space so it's easier to understand so and then over here we need to write logging dot error bracket e and then save this and let's run and see what we get okay so over here first it says unable to delete the file and then it says the file name so you see the file name is debugged underscore log underscore file dot py which is written over here and then the line number 11 so remember over here it says line 5 because here which is this one exc underscore info this will tell you exactly the line where it actually failed but over here uh, using the basic config function it will actually tell you the line of logging dot error bracket e so this is a little confusing but then uh, this is easier to read and this is more difficult to read so it's a trade-off basically and then finally the message error number two no such file or directory directory zx s dot pdf and then there will be a in the next line try to delete the file so finally we'll print out try to delete the file so you see right now if you get this error message the people using your program will understand that okay it was unable to delete, unable to delete the file and you will also be able to immediately debug that okay this line number this file name and this is the message so this file does not exist so we need to do something about this os.remove so I think this is quite useful for debugging your code and also using the try, accept, and finally, it will help you to uh, give a better exit to your code. So sometimes you might be like, okay, you know, I don't need to use try and accept because my code will work, but you don't know that. Code can fail at any time for any reason. Like over here, the uh, code failed because the file does not exist. What if you don't have the permission to delete the file or what if you have you have forgotten to import the module OS so there's a lot of errors which might pop up which you may not think about so it's better to use try accept finally and then use the logging module to log the uh, to display the error messages and messages so it's easier for you to understand why your code has failed and then you can immediately uh, fix it so um, and one more thing I want to show you here is level is equal to logging.info. So what if I used another level of logging? So let's say I used critical. So I would suggest not to uh, put critical here because what this is doing is it will in, uh, display any uh, error which is critical or above, which is uh, not advisable because there are other levels like warning and error which you also want to be displayed. So it's always better to use .info, but to just show you all what this whole level, what different levels do, I'm just going to run this and show you. So you see over here, no message was displayed. That is because the uh, os.remove, this will raise an exception, and this exception is actually an error level um, fail. It's not as severe as a critical fail. So it won't display the error message. So that's why I've advised you to just use logging.info. But in case you don't want um, all sorts of uh, error messages and you just want specific critical messages, then you can use logging.critical. But I would uh, advise to use logging.info. So uh, that's it for today's video. And I hope you all will be able to better structure your code and uh, you will find it easier to debug 
and point out where the problems are in your code. So thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please do comment below. And uh, if you have enjoyed the video, like and share with your friends. And uh, thank you for watching and see you again.